Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Alan, with Alan's Inventions, and I have another video for you guys today. This one is going to be based around the Raspberry Pi 4, which is this uh, single board computer here. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be running a Bitcoin node off of it. I'm using the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm using this 7-inch uh, HDMI screen. You can see that I use this 3D printed case for it. Um, I designed this, so there's a file down below if you want to download it. Or um, I might just throw these up on eBay if you're interested and don't have a 3D printer. I also used a 1TB solid state drive that I put into this enclosure that I got, got off of Amazon. And then just a few cables like an HDMI to mini HDMI. And then a couple of power cables, one for the screen one for the Raspberry Pi and then if you're wondering why this looks so bulky in all these batteries it's because I use this um, battery backup system or UPS um, that actually holds eight um, 18650 batteries to ensure that my node stays on in case of a power outage okay now that you guys have seen all the components that I'm going to be using. I'll tell you about the software that I'm using. It's going to be Umbrel. Uh, you can find it at getumbrel.com. Links down below. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you click on the get started button. It tells you what you need. So you select, you know, how to install on a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, these are pretty much all the components that I'm using as well, except I uh, 3D printed my own case and I'm using a 64 gigabyte uh, SD card so click through all your instructions here download it download Bolina Etcher uh, pretty straightforward um, and I'll show you guys next how to assemble if you're building one like mine all the components together okay guys so real quick just before I show you guys how to put this note together I do have a small request um, you know what it is if you could please hit the like and subscribe button down below or drop a comment um, that really helps me understand that you guys are watching these videos and that you're enjoying them or if you're not leave a comment and tell me what I'm doing wrong and I'll be happy to you know make my comments more appeasing to you guys that's what I'm here for I'm an entertainer remember so with that I have been really busy which explains the lack of content but if you didn't know I bought a house and made a quick house tour video I'm hoping that with that, I'll be able to do more techie things for you, more solar panels, more Raspberry Pi stuff, maybe some lawn and garden things. My cryptocurrency rigs are still running, even though I'm down to like two GPUs now. So lots of things going on, and I'm hoping to be more active on here. Again, like, subscribe, comment. It really helps. It really goes a long way. And I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now let me show you how I built this thing. Okay, so step one was to put all these standoffs on this Geekworm, uh, uh, what do you call this thing, the uh, battery holder, 18650 battery holder. Again, links down below if you guys want to go out and buy this stuff. Um, once you have all the standoffs installed, um, you're going to want to connect the power supply cable that goes on there. Uh, make sure not to forget because then you got to take the whole thing apart if you do. So once you have that ready, next up you have to set your Raspberry Pi on top of that. Make sure to also get the orientation right. So you can see how the uh, back screws over here are. So your USB ports go to the front this way. And this just goes over those same standoffs. This is pretty easy to assemble guys. So it's more of just going out and finding the right components that all work together nicely. Once you have that on there, before you can put the... Uh, the um, UPS board on top, you will have to add four more standoffs here. These are going to be the uh, female female headers. Uh, rather than show you guys me putting each one on individually through the magic of YouTube, they're going to magically appear all on there now. Of course I made a mistake, so rewind that, don't do it that way. Before you put your Raspberry Pi on, Make sure to at least install these two batteries, uh, only because this gets put on top. Um, and then you put standoffs on here, so you don't want to take those off just to put your batteries back in, since there's no way to get them in there without disassembling it. So, yeah, look out for that. Do as I say, not as I do. 
after installing the two batteries in here and putting the four standoffs that hold the Raspberry Pi 4 in place next up you're going to want to put on the final hat this is what actually controls the uh, charging for the batteries and provides power to your Raspberry Pi uh, don't use the, po the port on the Raspberry Pi anymore use the one on here you can see labeled 5 volts in you can also put 5 volts in through the barrel connector but that's totally your preference and you do also get a couple of um, power outputs over here on top 5 volts I'm not sure for how much current but that's in case you want to hook up a fan or put this in a different enclosure so after that this just goes directly on top you line up your GPIO pins and gently push it down and then there's four screws that go into each one of these corners okay now that you've installed all your batteries you can see there's two four six and then two more so seven and eight you can just connect this power cable to this jumper up here and set this off to the side for now we're gonna assemble the LCD display onto the 3d printed holder so to actually mount the screen it's pretty straightforward the 3d print already has some holes in the corners and then your screen just drops in to place like this so boom slide it in your holes all line up HDMI port does have to be in the upper right hand side if you're looking at it this way so on the opposite side of the solid state drive uh, slot and then using four M3 screws washers and nuts that will hold your screen into place okay now that you've installed the screen onto the uh, chassis case slash holder <laughs> whatever you want to call it um, these holes at the bottom don't actually go all the way through the reason is I just didn't understand how to do that in, in Tinkercad yet so basically just lines up with the holes at the bottom of your um, power supply slash Raspberry Pi assembly and you drop them into place and it is heavy enough and there's a slight offset so it almost holds it into place once you install it I mean you're not going to be really moving this thing around much once it's set up at least that's what I plan on not doing so anyways that falls right into place then your solid state drive slides right in here and then it's time to just hook everything up together so you have your display cable to your Raspberry Pi and then, then to the screen and then finally a USB 3.0 cable for your hard drive you will need two more cables one of them is going to be a USB type C to regular USB uh, this is to power your power supply board and then one more to power your LCD screen you can actually power the LCD screen from the Raspberry Pi itself um, just plug into one of the blue ports which you should have one more left unless you're connecting something else to it okay now that you've assembled all of the components together and have plugged everything in don't forget to plug in your ethernet cable um, I know I didn't mention it in the prior steps but that will be required Okay, so after everything's connected and working together, uh, there will be a small sign up process in Umbrel. Uh, you'll have to go to whatever IP address is assigned to your node, uh, type that into a browser, and then navigate um, through that sign up process, which is basically just asking you to create a wallet, set a password, and it's all pretty straightforward instructions, nothing too complicated. After all that, you should be able to just log back, log back into your dashboard and have this screen. Here in the center you can see that the Bitcoin Bitcoin Core is being uh, downloaded so this is basically a full copy of the Bitcoin network and this helps decentralize the network further. What that means is somebody wanted to take down all of the Bitcoin network they would have to basically destroy every node connected to the internet because every copy every node holds a full copy of the blockchain uh, you can click on manage here and see um, what current what block it's currently at how many connections you have so I'm currently connected to 10 peers uh, that I'm downloading my copy of and then it's validating uh, every blocks that I'm getting to make sure that the blockchain is accurate 
Um, that's one of the built-in features that comes with it. Then you also have your Bitcoin wallet, which you can send to re you can use to send or receive funds. Uh, it's all done within this Bitcoin Core uh, interface. If you guys are finding this video, please do send some funds here. Uh, it helps me grow the channel. All right, thanks. Look, there it is again. Scan it with your phone or paste it into your favorite wallet and send me a few satoshis. But anyways, back to the home screen. Uh, you can also install apps from the built-in app store. Uh, you can run your own uh, network attached storage, aka a NAS. Uh, so you install Nextcloud and it allows you to create your own personal cloud uh, on your Raspberry Pi. I haven't used this. That's not my intent with, with this Raspberry Pi. I strictly want it to be a Bitcoin node, so I won't be using that app. And then there's other ones like Pihole, which is a network-wide uh, ad blocker, Simple Torrent. So there's a couple of uh, different applications that can be installed. Home Assistant is a really good one if you don't have a smart home. And then BTP, uh, BTC Pay Server. The ones that I did install were BTC RPC Explorer. This allows you to view transactions um, on the network. Because I'm still synchronizing the blockchain, it's still not available. But it allows you to explore wallets, transactions, and just see everything going on. Uh, then there's Mempool, which is a snapshot of the current mem uh, memory pool for the Bitcoin network. And this will show you what the current fees are for sending funds. Uh, of course, it's a little bit different on the Lightning Network, um, just because if you have a direct connection, there's no fees. And then lastly, uh, the Lightning Network. Uh, here you can see that I don't have any active connections, I haven't sent anything, I haven't received anything because I have no open channels. Uh, but this is all done through a web interface, so you don't have to use a command line interface like you do with other wallets or other nodes, I'm sorry, like Raspberry Blitz. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please do uh, put them down in the comments below and I'll be more happy, more than happy to answer those. Um, but for now, I think uh, I'm going to go and play with this a little bit more. Let the Bitcoin blockchain synchronize. And if you guys have any questions, let me know and I might make a follow-up video later on. Alright guys, well thanks again for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.